Hello and welcome to the show today. My guest is the maker of video lectures on the topic of video games. Let's go to a clip now to see a piece of his work. ...is just how easy it is to screw up. As I pointed out before, the main problem with a character that is almost but not quite human is that all the areas the character falls short in become glaringly obvious. And it's not just an issue of model detail or texture resolution either. Movement has a huge impact on photorealism. Think of all the times you've seen a beautiful screenshot from a game and thought, good god, this is going to be incredible. And then you see the game in motion and it all just falls apart. There are a host of other factors that can compromise the humanity of a character. Flat voice acting, subpar animation, lame acting and performance, but even... <sighs> Smartass. Uh, even environment interaction. Isn't that just brilliant, folks? Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Floyd. Hey there. Thank you for coming on the show today. Absolutely, no problem. Now, first things first. What got you into making these videos? Well, I started making them a couple of years ago. Actually, the, um, the first one was for a school project. I was uh, studying for a master's degree in animation in, uh, at the Savannah College of Art and Design. And I was in a, one of my classes. It was just kind of a required course for the major, uh, an art history, a contemporary art history course. And the teacher knew that nobody in that class really wanted to be there, that she knew that we were all there because it was a course requirement. So she, she was going to have us do this uh, research thesis on a contemporary art topic. And she said, and she told everyone, look, this is just going to be practice for your main thesis later. Go ahead and pick a topic that applies to your major or your interest or something. And she suggested to me, you ought to do a video game related thing. I've had some people do that before. So, so we, along with a 15 page research thesis, I needed to give a 10 minute oral presentation about it to the rest of the class and everybody had to. And I knew everybody was going to be doing kind of a PowerPoint type thing. And, uh, I, I knew everyone probably would just, I couldn't think of a way to make that mo any more interesting or to entertain people. So, uh, and um, the Zero Punctuation series had just started like a few weeks or a month or so before that. And I'd been really getting into those. And so I thought, hey, I'll just make a little 10 minute video. It'll be entertaining. It'll be, and everyone will have a good time. So I went ahead and, so I went ahead and went through with that. It turned out being a lot more work than I thought, but worthwhile. I think the whole class enjoyed it. I mean, I don't think there were any gaming fans in the entire class probably but they all still i think they were just grateful not to have to sit through another powerpoint so that went pretty well it was fun later on at a, in, a, in a later term a later uh, semester i had another similar project come up that i had to do and uh, uh for another for a different class and i thought well that first one was fun let's just do another and so i made an episode on video games and sex and that one kind of as soon as I put it on YouTube, it unexpectedly kind of seemed to just explode in popularity. It showed up on like Joystick and Kotaku and just all kinds, all kinds of places, which I had never expected. And a guy, uh, a video game designer and writer who I quoted several times in that video named James Portnow, I, uh, I, I sent him the video, said, hey, I quoted you a whole lot. It's, just thought you might like to see it. Uh, he really liked it and said, we ought to work together on one of these things sometime. And I said, okay. And uh, since then, we've been making these videos together. He has kind of written topics for us to cover. And uh, I have basically edited them down into kind of videos aimed less at uh, other industry professionals and more at fellow gamers, just to kind of help educate people about gaming and uh, its potential and ways that it can get better. And we kept making those for about a year and a half, just kind of off and on on YouTube. And then James managed to get us a deal with the escapist to do one of these, to do these episodes weekly. And the show has just taken off from there. Now the whole video itself is full of animation, very informational topics and everything being what's the hardest part of making just one episode? Uh, the, well, for the original episodes, I think the uh, research and the, putting the script together was possibly the hardest part because I mean, I don't work inside the industry, so I'd have to go based on a lot of the, just, uh, just on research that I can look up, just uh, reading various books or uh, uh, reading interviews with industry professionals. Since James has come on board, uh, he, uh, he's worked in the industry for a long time as, as a designer on uh, the call of duty games, as a consultant, he's, he's, he gallivants as he puts it. So, He's just quite knowledgeable about the medium and has a lot of ideas for it. So now that he, once he took over kind of a lot of the main writing and I was just kind of do, editing it down and simplifying it, the artwork is really like the biggest part. It's not that the art is that complex to do. It's as you can as you could see, they're really 
just like scribbles and doodles and very simple little drawings. But coming up with ideas for like how best to represent the narration visually so it's not just confusing or so it kind of complements the narration and makes it all the easier for the viewer to follow t tends to take a lot longer than I expect it to. So I'd usually have to set aside like a full like 40 hour kind of week <laughs> to, uh, I'd have to wait for a vacation from school or work or something to uh, make one of these episodes, which, and because of that, it, there ended up being like five to six month long gaps between episodes and it just started getting a little bit ridiculous. So by the time the, we uh, managed to get this thing with the escapist started, I had just gotten a new job at Pixar Canada and I knew there is no possible way I have time to make these things every week. So James looked around and found a uh, artist that he had worked with uh, who agreed to named uh, her name is Allison Theus and she agreed to team up with us and handle the art for all these episodes and she is the only reason we're able to to do this series now so we are very grateful to her I'm very very lucky indeed yeah <laughs> now a lot of people watch the show so how often do you get like emails like requesting specific topics oh man <laughs> ever since we started on the escapist a lot the, uh, we've run for almost two months now. Uh, I think we're seven episodes in, and uh, our inbox that we created for this uh, for people to email us with questions and topic ideas is about 1,200 emails full now. We have been trying to go through and answer every single one. We're struggling to keep up. So if some of you have emailed us and we have not gotten to you yet, PAX really slowed us down. I apologize. We're trying to catch up. So. Uh, but yeah, we've gotten a lot of people, and a lot, and there've been a lot of good suggestions too. So I think we're going to be pretty well set up for topics to cover in the future. I'm glad we, I'm glad we set this this uh, kind of emailing system up because I really like that this is a show that people can kind of that our viewers can kind of get in on and can actually they can actually ask a question and about the industry that they want to know more about, and we can use that to educate everybody a little more. So now, is there like a episode in particular you're most proud of or like got the biggest response I mean you've done things like what well, you said sex in video games you've done violence which topic are you yeah. more proud of to, talking about uh, let's see I I suppose I do remember the video games and sex one very fondly just because it did very unexpectedly explode in popularity and is the only re and I think it's because of that uh popularity boom that I actually decided to just keep on making these things at, just aside from school. Uh, I am, I think some of the our latest episodes on the uh, Escapist Now, the one about free speech and the uh, one about kind of the way games can enrich our lives have had a really positive uh, response from people. I think we're uh, kind of winning a lot of people over and getting kind of expanding our fan base a lot with those episodes. And I think so I've been pretty happy with those i think actually um not our next episode but the one after that is going to be on video game music and i've been a video game music just kind of like fan connoisseur whatever you want to call it for a long time so i've been especially looking forward to releasing that one i think that one's going to be a favorite of mine for a little while but uh but yeah i i just love i love that there's there is so much that we can cover there's just there are so many topics that we can cover with the show and i i know that Whichever episode I choose as a favorite probably isn't going to stay my favorite for long at the rate we're going. James keeps on coming up with just lots of great ideas and stuff for us to cover. So I'm really, I really look forward to getting new scripts from him all the time. 